uh, we uh, we believe that you know government should be a continuum. You know, you we've had you know past governments, you know present governments, and governments that have you know that we you know come. Uh, assume you are you, you know you win the primary of your party, uh, and eventually go ahead to win the governorship. Uh, uh, are there policies of this present government that that you like that you want to continue, or are there some policies that that they're not very favorable to the people that you, you, you may decide to discontinue. Yeah, yeah, gov government is a continuum. There's no doubt about it. But at the same time, when you win an election, you have a holistic view of the government that you are replacing and decide on what to leave and what not leave in terms of policy. Policy. First of all, the present government in Nemo State is running Nemo State as a private limited liability company where the governor is the chief executive and all and all, all decisions, everything. The legislature is not working. The executive rests on him. The, of course, like I said, the public service is gone. I'm going to change that type of policy and that to, to work. I, I want Imo to work on the platform of a democratic system. I will be the executive governor and be in charge of the executive. I'll allow the legislature to do their work. That's why they were elected in the first place. So we interface with the legislature, but we're not going to mow down the legislature. It's a policy I would wish to change. Two, like I told you, I am not going to let the civil service remain as it is. I am going to get the civil service back to work. Professionalize it. Start a continuous program of retraining. If you go to Imo now and do a letter to any ministry requesting for something, you can wait for one month. You've not received an answer. And that is something you require maybe next week. It's because of lack of professionalism in the system. Before, if you do a letter, a commissioner will mail it to Palm Secretary, Palm Secretary will mail it to Director, direct, that's whichever director is responsible. Within three days, you've gotten an answer. That is the type of thing we want to go and engender again. So we're going to change government, present government policy on those terms. In education, his policy of free education sounds good, it's good. We're not going to destroy it. We're rather going to build it and fine-tune it. Because presently it is being based on insincerity. So we will remove that insincerity and do a free education policy that will encompass all people of Imo, not those resident in Imo. The present policy as it is affects only, in fact, Imo State University at the tertiary level. It doesn't affect Alva, which is a federal institution. It doesn't affect Omohabo. It doesn't affect Polytechnic Naked. Only it affects Omohabo because Omohabo is state. But it doesn't affect Polytechnic Naked. It's only in, in, It doesn't affect Futo. But in these institutions that I have mentioned, you have Imo indigents. Okay, yeah. So if you want free, to run a free education for Imo state, if you are an indigent of Imo state and you are in Futo, Federal University of Technology, where, you should take advantage of that free education. Just like the man in IMSO. So we must look at it, fine tune it, and get it across board so that every indigenous of Imus will benefit. And in addition, establish a bursary system for those who are outside the state and outside the country. A bursary system that will alleviate their sufferings as students. That is what, what I intend to do. I won't destroy the education policy of free education. No, I'll build on it. Get it more sincerely operated to for better resource. Um, Chief, you've made a very good uh, comment as far as uh, enhancing education in Imo State, yes. and uh, you also, uh, well, you made a comment about you know empowering the youth you know to reach their potential. But uh, one thing I've noticed recently is the strike level you know between teachers and students. Many times uh, you have uh, students eager to learn, but uh, suddenly universities are closed due to unexpected uh, strikes. So in the event you have been elected as the governor, what strategies will you implement to prevent or minimize the number of strikes? Okay, now you, you know that the education system in Nigeria is different from the system here. In Nigeria you have the universities, tertiary institutions, practically owned by the federal government. Majority of the higher institutions 
universities are owned by the federal government. You have very few states owned universities. But when you talk about strike, you talk about ASU, Academic Staff Union of Universities, they have a national body. So the education policy of a governor in a state may not affect the strike by ASU. That is a purely federal affair. But as a member of the Council of State, because if you are elected as governor, you become a member of the Council of State, you become a member of uh, the, uh, what do you call it now, um, uh, National Executive Committee of your party, and other constitutional uh, provisions that have given you membership of certain bodies at that level. You can now inject your own ideas to as advisory, of course, to the federal government. And it does that they can put to use and they will minimize strike. But no state governor on his own can stop us from going to strike. It is not possible. Yes. Then, uh, By the way, my wife is a lecturer. That's wonderful. Yes, so I, she lectures at Timo State University. So uh, she's also part of the system. Yes, and uh, I didn't tell you that. I have five children. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Should be the last one. You have, still have more to go. <laughs> well, uh, well uh, I'm, I'm still young. My wife is young. Uh, we don't intend to have more. But of course, you know, these things also depend, by, depend on God. Yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a Catholic. I'm a Protestant Catholic. We don't believe in abortion. So if for any reason my wife takes it, yeah, we're going to have the baby. That's good. The next question I have has to do with uh, the, they call it the bride price, you know, which many ad young adults you know, experience when they're getting ready to get, uh, get married. Many times from the local government area, you know, or less traditional level, you know, young people experience such challenges. Okay, what can they do to minimize the high bride price that many parents, you know, uh, invoke when their kids are getting ready to get married. So as a uh, prospective uh, candidate, what can you do to, you know, create light in the minds of the uh, parents? Okay, well now, you see, the issue of bride price and marriage, traditional marriage, sure. is sorting out itself. These are issues that actually you can deal with by law, by fiat. There was a time they made a law, bride price is 13 naira or 13 pounds. Okay. Right? right? To what extent did that law apply? Because these are things that are done interpersonal between two families. Where they will stay to negotiate it, you will not be there. At once the groom is willing to pay, he will not come and tell you or report to the police. So such laws are ineffectual laws. They are there, but they are not being implemented. They can hardly be implemented. But these are factors that societal and sociological activities can control. For instance, now, if people are getting married, there are situations where two couples will come in and say, we want to be married, and the parents will say, you pay, and the girl will say, if you don't want to accept what he has, I'm moving with him. That's a sociological factor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're taking care of these situations. Believe you me, right now, bright price in him, I don't think is very high. But again, these are also fallouts from the Biden economic situation, the high level or ultra high level of unemployment in the states and in the country indeed. You understand? Now, with the, the, one of the things we intend to do if we are elected is to re-establish and recreate the middle class. In Imo state now, the middle class is gone. Now, if we're able to recreate and reestablish the middle class, you know what that means? You'll be bridging the gap between the rich and the poor. So most of these young people you are talking about to fall into middle class, and they can afford to pay their pri the, the, the prices for their price. But because they are not employed, even if you ask, if you are not employed, you're not employed. Even if you bring it down to 1,000 naira, if you don't have 1,000 naira, you don't have it. But if we are able to re-establish the middle class, the gap between the rich and the poor will be drastically reduced. And how do you, re how do you create the middle class? You must open up the economy to private participation. And I've said it before. You must open it up to private participation. If you go to a worry now, one of the things I intend to achieve within the first one year is to deal decisively with the 
over the industrial layout. On a nature road, that's an over industrial layout. It's a slum. No roads, poor electricity, nothing, no infrastructure. Is that's one of the first things I want to do in the first one year. Create the environment and take away the land from those who are speculators, who are not investors. People grab land, hold it down for little or nothing. They will not develop and they'll put it at a very high price for those who want to develop. We haven't addressed that. And by the time you address that, take away the land, give it to those who really would need it and would want to make use of it. And monitor it effectively and put on the roads, electricity, and that, that, that. Believe you me, you will have investors coming in to invest. And you remove the bureaucracy of somebody wants to get land, you know what? He has to stay for like six months, one year before he can get land. When the Land Use Act has made it very easy and simple, the process with which you can get land if you're a genuine investor. So these are things that we will deal with, that the fallout will now have impact, will be impacting on the sociological and cultural aspect of life. And that is where you talk about the bright price. But if you take bright price as an isolation to deal with it, you will not achieve results. You make a law. Okay, it is free. Can it, even, can it ever be free? Your law will be there. And people will be negotiating behind you. Are you going to start using policemen to chase everybody who wants to get married? No, you cannot. So these are societal factors that will be dealt with by sociological actions as fallout from our major trust of our economic policy.